What is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marf Fugle News. Today, we're going to go over all of the current events and much, much more. So stick around. We have a lot to get through. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. All right. What is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. So we have a lot to get through. So if you are new here, remember, uh, of course, everything is going to be over on our website, whether it be a picture, a video, a document, an article. It is all going to be backed up on our website. On top of being able to sign up for our email alerts, you can also follow along on a separate device. Now, when you go over there, you'll see that we've taken the time before every single show or cell phone video to add every single article, video, picture, tweet, whatever we're showing you here, we give you the source. That way, you know exactly where it is coming from from. It's very easy to navigate. Just look for the French prepare this thumbnail. And then once you click that, it will bring you to all of today's uh, news. Now there is uh, a ton here. So just remember once you hit that yellow bar, uh, that is web only content. That's the stuff that is too hot for TV or the stuff that is getting people booted for. There's an entire other show down there. If you do like to support and you are trying to prepare yourself for whatever may come, whether that be a storm or the end of the world, uh, over on the right side, you can go through any of our affiliates. When you go through an affiliate, essentially, you are saying to them that we are sending you there. They send us a commission. And then, of course, you most likely will get a discount on top of an awesome product. Uh, that way, you you are helping us since we are covering controversial things. Uh, we don't exactly get treated uh, nicely by many platforms. So uh, thank you everybody for coming in. Let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Hello, Adam and hello, Fugal fam. I am doing just fine. All right. So we have a ton to get through. I, I'm going to go right into it. Uh, I, I want you guys to try to keep it, uh, keep it kosher in here, but man, this is bad. So a study finds that microplastics in human blood for the very first time. Microplastics. It says a new study has found that microplastics in human blood for the first time in a study published in the journal Environment International and first reported by The Guardian, scientists analyzed blood samples from 22 healthy volunteers. A quantifiable mass of plastic particles were discovered in 17 of the samples or nearly 80% of subjects. It says PET plastic, which is commonly used for beverage bottles, was detected in 50% of the samples. Uh, polystyrene utilized for packing food was found in 36% of the samples, and polyethylene, uh, which makes up plastic bags, was discovered in 23% of samples. PMMA was uh, measured in 5% of the samples. So essentially, um, if it is what they say it is, why this is for all of a sudden out of the first time, uh, did manufacturing change on plastic bottles or on these things? Obviously, over the last few years and over the last couple decades, people have talked about certain kinds of plastic being made uh, with plastic bottles. And uh, Dex, do you remember the name of the, is it, it's something B, it's, uh, it's the the, the stuff you don't want to see in a, a plastic oh, PB, PBA free is what you're looking for, right? Yeah, that's that's what I was looking for. So, you know, a lot of bottles will say PBA free or they'll say they don't have this in it, whatever. Uh, but this is kind of weird, though, because I don't think that there's been any kind of massive change. And they've done these studies before. Why all of a sudden are they finding plastics in 
our blood. Uh, now, if you eat that or if you're using a bottle and you're drinking that, how does that go in? It, I obviously would have to process through your stomach and then go up through your bloodstream somehow. Uh, that is pretty insane. So uh, one other thing is all of the things that, you know, I hear this argument all the time where now there is more autism than ever and there's more different things, I guess. And uh, what the older folks that I have met, they said, well, I think we had just as much back when we were kids. It was just underdiagnosed or we called it something else or they said, hey, maybe they were just a, a little bit different. Right. Um, but again, it's something that is super prevalent. Uh, many of you probably know I have autism in my family and uh, in now in my direct family. So I just feel like it's it's kind of weird. Now, some think it's actually uh, the scorpion there uh, that may have contributed to uh, kids as far as like the, there's different ones that have uh, been required that haven't been required back when I was a kid. In fact, I think I got like seven or eight uh, things when I was a kid. Now they're, Dex, do you remember the number of, of things that they have to get to even just go to school? Isn't it like 40, 40 different things they have to be put right. in? Yeah, it's it's over. It's it's at least that amount. I don't know because my kids are, are older now. It's been a long time since I had to deal with that. But I know the number is significantly higher today than it used to be. Well, I, I it does seem like that certain things like ADD and autism are more prevalent today. I'm just uh, putting out the thought out there that, you know, maybe something like this is a contributor. Uh, is this something that is because of cutting corners? Uh, if they did find out that this was actually from the bottles and not from something else and from the plastics and the stuff we eat from, then who is responsible? Sh shouldn't somebody being sued? Uh, is this good for us? Is this bad for us? I guarantee you that there's probably, you know, something wrong here. Dex? Yeah, you know, we've we've heard over the years lots of different things, you know, even going way back to lead, right? Though, you know, lead was really bad and, and they took it away. Um, and PBA, like you said, uh, we try to avoid that now and everybody advertises they don't have it. Um, and things like Teflon, right? And your pans, they say when it starts to peel, don't be cooking them anymore because you might be ingesting it, things like that. So this just sort of, I guess, reiterates that we ought to be at least cognizant of and probably ought to spend a little bit more time of, of our research dollars into understanding, you know, what it is that we're consuming. And even though we don't consume a bottle, a plastic bottle, we actually drink from it, but maybe that drink is actually taking particles from that bottle and putting it into our into our body or, or, or whatnot. And, you know, I, I think it's it's wise for us to think about uh, what is the best, you know, forms of, of preparing food, uh, consuming food, storing and consuming, you know, beverages, et cetera, so that we don't necessarily make ourselves susceptible to things that may not be good for our bloodstream, so to speak, right? Yeah, and uh, of course, I, I thought about uh, cancers, different kinds of cancers that are now more prevalent. Uh, <clears throat> there's, there's certain weird uh, debates here in the Northwest. Here in the Northwest of the country, most of you probably don't know this, but we have a higher, uh, higher cases of MS, I believe, um, multiple sclerosis, and it, I think that's what, it, it, either that or it's uh, neuro, neurological uh, disease, um, we have higher cases of it, and people have asked if it's. Uh, there's even billboards locally here that say, you know, what what is different? Is it in the rain, or is it, you know, is it in the the water? What is different? They actually have a campaign where they've spent millions of dollars on these billboards uh, a few years back to to let everybody know, like, why are, why do we have this abnormally high? I think it's the world's highest uh, number of of this, you know, occurring, and it's like. Obviously, some of us have to be like, okay, something has to be in the food or something has to be going wrong here. Uh, we know that companies care about money over health. I mean, that's absolutely provable. I mean, even when you uh, when you watch a, a based on true events movie like Aaron Brockovich, where, you know, uh, she ended up doing all that stuff over the water. It's like uh, that is the kind of stuff that's probably happening all over the world. And they just wait until they get caught. And then many of the hugest companies, they just pay the people off. Uh, it happens so much. I'm sure there's people in our audience that have probably been paid settlements because they are permanently injured or sick or something uh, from some sort of product. I mean, 
if you look at all of those commercials that say like, have you consumed this or have you used this weed eater? Uh, those are all things that, you know, people, it contributed to cancers. And then these companies, they get a lawsuit against them. They lose and then they just have to pay the people that come forward. And if you don't come forward, you don't get paid and it doesn't hurt them at all. They just keep going and they, you know, they'll tweak something and then they'll change it and whatever else and keep going. So pretty disgusting. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. And then Californians find bargain gas prices in Tijuana. It says that Claudia Jessica Virel uh, used to fill up her gray Nissan Pathfinder near her home in Chula Vista, California. Then invaded UKR and gasoline prices went bonkers. The 54-year-old psychologist soon discovered a bargain. A dozen miles south, just across the U.S.-Mexico border in Tijuana, regular gas for uh, is an average of $3.96 a gallon, nearly $2 less than in California. <clears throat> it says she was in Tijuana on Wednesday to take her children to a doctor's appointment, so it wasn't a big deal to swing by the Santa Fe gas station on Salinas Boulevard to fill up, but she also has been making special trips. So it says, I swear I've been coming once a week, she said. I cross when I can. Uh, she can thank one man for the discount, Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. As the conflict in UKR triggered a run-up in world oil prices, his administration vowed to keep prices under control by providing subsidies to Mexican oil companies and refineries. It says, quote, the state should not neglect its social uh, responsibility, and the state is here to protect people, the populist president said. It said, who faces a recall, uh, of course, next month. So do you think that that's because he's going up for re-election, maybe? I don't know. And it said, uh, it's not about leaving everything up to the market. It says, now banners at Mexican gas stations in Tijuana flaunt their prices with signs like cheaper than in the USA. So people are crossing the border to get gas. Like that's pretty, uh, that's pretty, I, I don't know what to call that. What do you call that? Uh, what I do know though is uh, normally it's not uh, gas that people are sneaking over to Tijuana for. So I guess it's a good thing, right? Uh, and then uh, Stephen McMahon says they put AB, uh, PBS plastic in the fibers of men's shorts and they know contact with them renders men infertile. Um, I have, I actually believe I did see that somewhere. I don't normally wear shorts very often because I'm one of those guys who never wear shorts, but uh, I know that certain swim trunks are super uncomfortable and they're all plasticky inside. I couldn't imagine that. Uh, Chicky R says, big shout out to my dear friend, Barefoot Lass. We met in chat and have met up in person. Proud to call her my friend. Sending love and prayers from Northeastern Maryland. Uh, that is awesome, Chicky R. So a lot of, of the new people that have come don't remember when we had a Discord. Our Discord was taken down right before that season where everybody drops their things in the box. Uh, they said it was because of what people were sharing back and forth. It was nothing bad. It was just like the stuff that... People get booted off for all the time. Um, we never shared anything. We just provided a place for people to chat. We moderated it. Uh, Jay Stone, again, uh, she was a big part of that and other volunteers like uh, Clan Mama and others. Uh, but people were meeting in person in groups as large as 160 and they were talking about prep and about events and just getting together like-minded people and eating dinners and doing barbecues and it was really amazing. Uh, we were organized, and I think they saw that. So uh, that got taken down. Uh, but uh, either way, it, there's a lot of people that have met in person and are actually you know lifelong friends now because of this. So that's really, really, really amazing, and that's one of the, the biggest things that we're proud to say that we help do. Um, as far as... Uh, Jay, speaking of Jay Stone, who helped run the D Live, uh, apparently her father is sick. So I'm asking for everyone to pray for her pops. Uh, he is not having a, a good time. He goes by pops. So if you want to pray for pops, uh, he is in the hospital right now. I I just recently got the details of it. So again, if everybody can just send positive prayers uh, towards him, every Fugle fam member here. Honestly, we've had uh, a couple years of of uh, some pretty pretty big losses. Uh, I still want to say, you know, uh, prayers go to, uh, of course, Florida Patriot seventy one. We lost her 
uh, I believe early in this year. I want to say that was January or late last year. So it's it's not easy losing anyone. I, I'm hoping that Pops makes a full recovery and that he can be in the chat and be hanging out with us later. Uh, and then Spartan O Negative, Mandy May, thank you, and Minus Blindfold says, check out Gray Zone Interview. Uh, I will. Thank you, Minus Blindfold, and thank you for stopping in. And then we have uh, we have the Exxon Valdez spill was a nightmare, a looming environmental disaster, and in, could even be worse. So they're saying that this is a ticking time boom boom, and it says Christopher Reddy is an associate scientist and director of the Coastal Ocean Institute at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, <clears throat> and has advised government agencies on oil spills and their environmental impact. The, it says uh, it's rare to see maritime disaster unfold in slow motion, but that's exactly what he says is happening off of the coast of Yemen. It says an aging, decaying oil tanker, the FSO Safer, uh, has been anchored five miles off the coast of Yemen since March 2015 when Houthi took control of the Red Sea coastline near the port city of Al Hudaya. It says that international officials are working to stave off potential environmental and human catastrophe. The 362-meter SAFER, uh, odd name for something that's about to be a disaster, uh, the SAFER is filled with more than a million barrels of uh, light, sweet, crude oil, liquid cargo, which could lead to an ecological disaster were the vessel uh, ever to, to leak or explode. The cataclysmic March 1989 Exxon Valdez spill uh, is the yardstick against which other all other maritime oil catastrophes are measured. That disaster, which took place 33 years ago, coated hundreds of miles of Alaska coastline with thick crude, decimating the region's pristine marine life. If you remember, I was ta talking to you about our, our friends who are divers and they study all of the coral reefs. And they say that they're dying at just rapid rates. I, when I see this, I think of that. And as far as uh, as far as far our, our ocean and the mass die-offs and the animals that have been beaching themselves, all the whales that have uh, their navigation has been just completely screwed up. Uh, we have dolphins beaching themselves in the hundreds. We have fish that are just like, f you know, floating up to the top of the sea. Um, one thing I do believe is something is happening to our, our oceans. They say that it is getting, the, that the degrees are going up. I don't know about the temperature of anything, but I do know uh, there are a lot of mass die-offs. And I've been following that for years. As you guys know, some of you probably followed me early on. I covered a lot of mass die-offs and I, I try to co cover every one that happens. If there's birds that fly out of the sky or just fall out of the sky, if there are dolphins or sharks or anything that really dies off in a mass event, uh, I try to cover that. And it's pretty alarming how much it has gone up. I mean, we've covered just this year, I think, like four or five of these events. So when they say that this is a thing, I, I hope that that doesn't happen. It's like I don't understand how humans can make these just gigantic ships full of this stuff and then not figure out how to, to just handle it, to just go do it. We've made some of the most impressive machines as human beings, uh, just gigantic structures. Uh, can they figure out a way to get this uh, you know, out of there without screwing up everything? If it did end up leaking or if somebody purposely hit it with something or a, you know, somebody hit it with a uh, rocket launcher or something, uh, that would definitely screw up a whole lot and it would screw up fishing and it could be a further hit. I'm just, Dex, I think like it would be kind of uh, really messed up if this ended up leaking and then destroying sea life and then we end up seeing a raise in the prices for sea life too. Uh, I mean, we've seen the rise in price of pretty much everything else. Well, yeah, I mean, but imagine just if they could recapture this, which sounds like that's what the path they're on. They're trying to... Um, get, they got approval from that group uh, that is there that took over. Um, so long as they get the resources in a certain amount of time from, say, uh, UN or someone else they're going after to try to get help <clears throat> with the equipment. And if they get this off, but imagine if they could actually get that off, that's an extra 40 you know, million gallons of uh, gas, of gas, right? That could help the help a lot of us. So, you know, maybe <clears throat> that's probably just maybe a drop in the bucket, but still, nonetheless, it's just sitting there. It's been sitting there since 15, right? That's a long time. So get that stuff off and 
and uh you know don't let this turn into a, a, a nasty event like we've seen in the past so and 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 again that region is not a region that's very safe so it, it is it, you know it is it's not the same as if it was docked off the the coast of of america we'd probably be taking care of it and and we'd probably it probably wouldn't even be an issue but you know where it is now it's it's not necessarily the safest of places and it could easily be you know a target of other things should somebody want to do something to it right yeah and you don't need much i mean some you know we've heard about all over the world them having these uh rocket you know rocket mounted uh rocket launchers i'm sure that those are attainable in in some of those countries uh, i could see somebody just doing something just to to do something horrible or at least that's what they'll say right R. Tate, thank you for the diamond over on DLive. Thank you as well. It says, cover it, Marv. Uh, Jacktronics, Team and Red Pill, J-Star, Order, thank you for uh, gifting out badges to people. Tartan Granny, thank you as well for being here. Serenity PA, Stormblade X69. Uh, we've got Zenado 19 thank you so much. And Vista Lib and uh, Skyhouse, thank you, everybody. Gem Gem, thank you for moderating. Thank you for being uh, a loyal watcher and a loyal mod over on DLive for a long time. Thank you for your service. And then a uh, good, good point to make is make sure to thank your mods for keeping it a positive place. Some of the simple rules here is just don't put anybody down. Uh, you can disagree respectfully and politely, uh, but do not put other creators down. Don't put anybody down. Basically, that's the simple rule. And then we have a cartel conflict. And by the way, we are going to be getting into uh, another thing, which is, of course, the all of the stuff that is going on with UKR and the bear and the dragon. <clears throat> and there's some not so good stuff. And for those of you who people normally say you have a tinfoil hat, definitely uh, scary things ahead if, if you if you are going with your gut right now. So we'll talk about this first. Of course, the cartel conflict rocks Mexico's Baroque uh, jewel Zacatecas. And I apologize if I say that wrong. It says it recently recaptured by the security forces. Palmas Altas in the northern state of Zacatecas is now a ghost town. Apart from a a few well-fed dogs walking under a blazing sun. It says a burnout pickup is left abandoned at the entrance of the village, which sits at an arid plateau of the uh, foot of the mountains. Graffiti signed CJNG warns that the area is under control of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, whose leader Nemesio El Mencho Aseguera is one of the United States' most wanted fugitives with a $10 million bounty on his head. To put that into perspective, I want to say that uh, the Al Canada, that guy, the number two guy, had a ten million uh, bounty on his head. I think uh, the, the actual guy we found in a hole, uh, Osama, had like a, or I'm sorry, yeah, I'm, uh, oh yeah, yeah, Osama. I thought I was saying a president's name there for a second, um, but yeah, that that guy had like a twenty-five million or fifty million. Uh, but that's a that is a huge <clears throat> bounty. It says on a nearby wall, the acronym CGNG has been crossed out with black paint to make way for the letters CDS, imprisoned drug kingpin uh, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's Sinaloa cartel. Since 2020, the two cartels have been fighting over Palmas, Altas, and Zacatecas, whose main city is a colonial center known for a Baroque-style architecture, with the state's trafficking routes towards the United States, as well as the ports of the Pacific and Gulf of Mexico uh, coast. It says, leave or die, life in the town took a violent turn for the worse in February last year, says Miguel, <clears throat> the farmer in his 40s, whose name FP has changed to protect his identity. It says, quote, they started kidnapping and beating people. They perished forcefully. A man and his son, fear, made us leave. A year later, there were only five families left. Then came a chilling warning. Either you leave or you will die. So one thing that is really messed up is when you know how involved uh, the U.S. government has been with some of these cartels. They have done deals with cartels that essentially let them keep running and let them keep doing stuff like this. Uh, so they'll they'll give up information on the other one or this. There's always this thing where they're, they're trying to, uh, you know, basically some will perish and more will survive. That kind of, that they think that they're, 
by taking this one guy down and letting these three guys go, these are small fish, we'll just fry the big one. This, you know, we've seen it in a million movies, but that happens in real life. And it's like the cartel is tied in with three letter agencies and we know this. So I just wonder how much of this stuff is funded or, you know, that different countries end up contributing to. This could, Dex, don't you think, hypothetically, couldn't this be a proxy between the U.S. and other major major, uh, nation states? Yeah, we've always spent a lot of money in the past, uh, you know, fighting the, you know, quote unquote, conflict on uh, on d- drugs. Right. So, you know, the thing that's, that's, that's striking to me is that we're seeing more and more of and we just reported it a couple of days ago uh, of these <laughs> types of escalations happening, you know, near um, our our border and near you know towns along along the border uh, with the U.S. So. As this, you know, we need to keep an eye on this to see how how a it escalates if if it does and what that means to us. Obviously, it means a lot to the people that live on either side, right? That have to deal with the the cartel there. Um, it 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 means a lot to the people that are especially in America that are having to deal with what's funneling across, right? And and what they're doing and how they're they're making their living. So I think this will this will probably be one of those escalations we're going to see more of, especially this year and into next. That's just my own personal prediction. I don't have any you know any data to back that up other than we've talked a little bit about it um, in in the news we've been reporting because we've seen you know these these types of things happening. So. Um, you know, let's just pay attention and see what happens. It won't surprise me if we don't, you know, if if the country of Mex- Mexico, the actual state, can't take control of this um, and it turns into something bigger, then it may be something that we get involved with in some way, shape or form more than we're already doing today. Well, imagine this if if uh, someone like that, the lady we were talking about earlier going over to Tijuana for gas <clears throat> Uh, all it takes is one lady like that to go down there and get kidnapped and then it's an international incident. So uh, either way, it's it's n- not a good thing. I, I There are parts of Mexico that are just absolutely beautiful and there are parts of that are beautiful and uh, under watch by different militaries and have cartel. When when I was in Sayulita, uh that was that was pretty freaky. And not as a teenager, that was scary because the military were there uh and if they weren't like there was a like a two hour period where they weren't there and they warned people of any car coming in you get inside and you hide uh that was told to us and you know as essentially a long-term tourist there uh, i was you know that scared the crap out of me uh, because for two hours they were saying that you know if anybody comes in we're not here to uh, protect the entrance to the town it was it was pretty freaky Go ahead, Dex. Yeah, and and the the other thing is, there's a lot of people in America that are from or have heritage or actually are from Mexico, right? And they live here, so you know they struggle with the whole notion of going back and how do you go back to visit family and safely and come back through, right? Um, you know, outside of maybe air travel, which is probably a little easier, but just going through the border and coming back through, you know, all of those areas down there can be very difficult, especially with you know what's happening with the with the cartel. So I know that they. You know, that makes a challenge, you know, just think about, you know, mom and dad want to go home and see grandparents or something like that. And they can't. Right. Yep, exactly. Uh, Before we move on, we're going to start talking about France. France is now doing more patrols than ever with their nuke subs. I do want to remind you, if you have not already, we have stressed this for now four years. If you do not know the risks of an EMP, uh, there is a very big reason why we have chosen EMP Shield as an affiliate. We believe this will save lives, uh, if not e- with an EMP, with a CME. This can actually protect you against all three phases of an EMP and multiple times without zero degradation, and it can protect against a solar event. So if we have a Carrington level event, and I shouldn't say if, it is guaranteed we will have another Carrington level event hit us. It is a matter of, of when. Uh, they happen on ev- average uh, every 150 years. It's been 160. We're overdue for one hitting directly uh, on Earth. So this is something that can heavily affect our grid. It could possibly knock out our entire system. And the U.S. and other countries, you know, first world countries, are still vulnerable to this. And they do not have it fixed. 
Uh, they know that it is a huge weak spot. That is why every other nation state is coming up with EMP weapons. That is one of their few things. And I bet you, if any of them did plan on attacking, they would do it before we got our holes fixed. Now, if you think about the executive orders that were put in place by the last president, they know that we're on the road to protecting our infrastructure. So you can be the judge for yourself. This is, again, one of the best companies we've ever worked with out of all of the affiliates we've worked with. Uh, this company, all, almost half of the staff actually watch. They're part of the Fugel fam. Uh, the other day, you probably wouldn't know it, but one of them called in just as regular and talked about some other stuff. Um, they are part of the prepping community. Uh, they hand make these in uh, now multiple places. They, When we started with them, they were a tiny little building before all of these executive orders and they were hand making them in Kansas. They are still doing so, but now they are expanding because they have uh, uh, contracts with DHS, DOD, and all sorts of other agencies building them for them. So if the government is protecting its personal stash of, of buildings with these, then it's definitely a good idea for us to be looking at what they're doing and do it ourselves. Civilians don't prepare like the, the military and government does, and that shouldn't be the case. Uh, if we see something, if they have something, we should know it and uh, be doing the same. So again, go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Not only will you get $50 off per device, so if you get one for your generator, your car, and your house, you'll get $150 off, uh, but you'll also be helping us out at the same time. Uh, affiliates like this help support us uh, when the platforms don't. So thank you everybody that has done that and everybody that's dealt with them absolutely loves this company. They even send Christmas notes and, and they uh, to us and they've sent us a Christmas video with the whole factory saying, you know, just love the Fugle fam. So yeah, there's no nobody like this company. We've never worked with another company like it. Uh, Spartano Negative, thank you so much. Again, I appreciate your support. Romeo C, thank you for subscribing. Irish Rebel, you cannot keep doing that. That uh, Thank you for your support. Closing out the week, the Ganda was running overtime tonight uh, on the mainstream news, making uh, the, uh, the Bear and Putin looking like the Keystone Cops. This, as I said before, I really think the West is underestimating Putin. I do too. I think that, uh, I don't think they're underestimating. I think they're just downright uh, saying that they're just completely flubbing everything up. I don't think that's actually the case. I think if anything, it's planned uh, or, you know, there's, it's purposefully being screwed up. People think that the, they're going off of, by the way, it's very easy to convince uh, people of something they already kind of think. How many people have this view of, uh, the bear country as being backwards or uh, poor or, you know, behind technologically. They're not. They're ahead of us. And in our own documents, if you're like a downright patriot and say the U.S. is bigger, our own country and our own Pentagon is saying that they're ahead of us in areas. Our own uh, c country and government and Pentagon documents show that China is ahead of us in so many areas. It's not even funny. All the technological and AI areas, we are now behind. So that's not me saying it. That's the actual Pentagon. So believe who you want. It sounds like we're behind. And those same patriots will go, hey, you know, that certain president for eight years basically went backwards on the military uh, thinking it's going to be world peace. And then now we're where we're at right now, which seems like it had a 30 year plan to it is happening. All of us saw it coming. And uh, of course, now it's it's happening and nobody can believe it. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. J Mav says, quit saying like so much. You live with very little sun. You need D3 loads of it and nascent iodine along with vitamin C. I actually do take uh, D3 and I take vitamin C because I know I live in an area with no sun. Uh, but yeah, JMav, thank you. And like, uh, thank you. Just kidding. Like is a filler word and uh, I, I do appreciate that. Like, thanks. France probes Interpol, president for alleged torture barbarism. Dex, do you want to talk about this? Well, yeah. So this is kind of crazy. We've got, you know, um, when you're when you're um, alleging and investigating someone for something as as, you know, 
elaborateist torture and barbarism to find out that they're the head of Interpol. And for those who don't know, that's international police, right? It's sort of an agency that's, you know, uh, handing off in between the countries, so so to speak, and handling international law. Um, that's kind of crazy, right? That that's a that's a big deal. Um, I, you know, and but then on the spy side of things or the spook side of things, you go, yeah, well, you know, you'd expect that kind of stuff to happen from these these types of agencies. But um, so on one hand, you know, just taking it at face value, you go, yeah, this is bad. On the other hand, taking it from you know the you know the movie side of things you go oh well that's sort of what's to be expected um and then you know the the third the third angle is okay well who who doesn't like this person and what's somebody doing because somebody's obviously going after uh interpol uh and the head of interpol if that's if these allegations are coming out right so those are sort of the things you think about when you look at this this type of uh of of headline this type of investigation And it says that the probe follows a legal complaint by the NGA, which accused Arisi of being responsible for the torture of an opposition figure in his role as high-ranking official at the United Emirates Interior Ministry. And then the allegations of torture had already been leveled at Raisi by human rights organizations when he ran for president of Interpol, saying that he feared that the agency would be at risk of exploitation of repressive regimes. So uh, further, again, this is going to be something that is w that we'll have to follow up on. You don't want to cover this stuff until it's all the information is out. And then China crash mystery deepens as evidence suggests a mid-air breakup. We covered this when it first came out. The plane went straight down and people were very, very concerned about how it was. And a lot of people did not believe they said, you know, planes don't crash like that. It just went boom, straight down. Uh, it says at least one piece of the Boeing 737-800 that crashed in China appears to have broken loose well before impact, the finding that adds mystery to the plane's fatal dive. The piece suspected to have come from the China Eastern Airlines Corporation Limited jet was found about 10 kilometers miles uh, from the main wreckage area, Chinese officials said at a briefing on Thursday. If investigators confirm that the part came from the jet, it would indicate uh, the plane suffered some kind of midair breakup, which could offer clues about what led to Monday's crash or at least shed light on the flight's final seconds. It says the questions are exactly what piece uh, was it and when did it come off, said Je Jeff Guzletti. It says the former chief of accident investigations at the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. Flight 75735 uh, five from Cunning to Zhengzhou went down without an emergency radio call from pilots, slamming into a forested hillside about 100 miles from its destination. According to the Civil Aviation Administration of China, uh, there were 132 people aboard. The highly unusual dive has bash baffled crash investigators and safety experts. Aircraft such as the 737-800 are designed not to dive so aggressively, so some kind of aircraft failure or pilot action would be required to keep its nose pointed down. Uh, essentially, people think that it uh, or say it should have gli you know glided. It would still crash even if it was going super fast. It would glide, uh, you know, more flat. But it just went straight down. I said, you know, I don't know if they've f exactly figured this out. Um, uh, well, I d has the black box come out on this yet? Do we know? Not, not that I'm aware of, and and I don't know how much you know China would uh, would actually uh, would actually share that information. They'll pub they'll publish what they want to publish, right? They'll say what they want to say. I want to know who was on know, it. Exactly. That's that's my thought. Is, is, is somebody on there uh, was important, probably. <laughs> and, and we may never know. It could be somebody who was, you know, a spy on one side or the other. Right. And and they were this was one way of taking them down. I don't know. We won't know. Um, it'd be nice if we did. But there's there's something going on on this story uh, besides just a, a random event. Certainly, it could just be in a complete accident. But it's so odd for this to go down the way it went down. Um, it, it, you know, it's puzzling experts, too. They're like, this doesn't make any sense. Unless he had like a heart attack and fell on it and pushed. But even then, they say that systems are set in place to where it would try to it would try to push back. And then the pilot would have to physically like keep pushing back on it or something. 
Right. Uh, and there's a co-pilot too. Now, granted, one could have been in the restroom and the door could have been locked, right? So um, that's a scenario that plays out where there's only one person in there. Uh, but typically there's two people there for now, the most part, right? It, it says the Indo- I- Indonesian National Transportation Safety Committee said there wasn't enough evidence to say what caused the crash. But the NTSB dissented uh, saying that the captain most likely did it intentionally in a murder suicide so that is that's pretty big that they're saying that this could have been uh something like that one other thing is i don't know how many of these planes are you never know if they're adding some sort of remote control capabilities or something else into some of these planes or it tested or something i don't know Uh, or Or lasers or energy oh dex do you remember uh, and, you know, the, it could be not true that there was any pilot in it. It could have had one of these units. Do you remember when we covered uh, last year, they made this robot thing that sat in the pilot's chair? And we talked about it because we said that it could be replacing commercial pilots. It was an autopilot type thing, but more than just like setting it on a- autopilot in the sky, it was an autopilot robot that could actually fly the entire plane from takeoff to land everything else. And the concern about that was that there's a lot of middle class uh, pilots and upper class pilots even that earn a livable wage. It's one of the jobs that you can still earn at least a a wage where you might actually be able to buy a house. Uh, As far as, you know, trucking, trucking is something that robotic or remote control uh, autonomous vehicles will be uh, flying around. And then, of course, commercial jets. These are all careers that, uh, the, the you know, can be middle to upper class uh, folks that can actually make a living and live the American dream. They're all getting replaced, or at least that's what it seems like they want. I want to know if everybody just had images of that movie Airplane when the autopilot inflated uh, in the in the co-pilot seat. And, and Adam, I don't know if you saw that movie, but you're young, so it's okay. What, Airplane? Yeah, Airplane. Yeah. Remember the autopilot yeah. inflating? Yeah, and airplane two exactly and three. Exactly what I thought and, about when you said it. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. No, that was a well. I I was it was before my time, but it was a classic. So I rented it from the library when I was a kid. I rented all the old movies. I, I grew up on I Love Lucy and and Ron, uh, uh, Rhoda and uh, I Dream a Genie and all of those. Um, hey. hey, quick shout out to Wages who sent a whole bunch of people over from his channel. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Wages World. If you guys haven't gone over and checked out his channel, he covers solar weather, and most likely we'll have him on soon here because uh, there have been so many solar events, it's insane. Uh, Stevie B says, you do look pale. Uh, Your coloring is off. So, okay. So, like, uh, what was that, JMav? So what you guys don't realize is the color is not actually color. Just, I got to... Because uh, people make... It's all my white balance. So, watch. So, I could... <laughs> I could make myself as orange as I want, or I can make myself white. It's so funny. Obviously, my color's off. <laughs> Heck, I could make myself black and white if I wanted to. I think it's just because it's too bright. <clears throat> There we go. Every time I take my camera off to take pictures of my kids, I change the settings. So you'll probably notice the the reason why it matters is people, um, when I'm healthy looking, people say I'm sickly. And when I'm sickly, people are like, you're, you look great today. It's funny. Um, anyways, yeah, it's, it's all uh, two tone light. So I can turn that up, but it also the white balance has a, a big part of, uh, of the cameras. So anyways, I just think that's two different comments on that. And I just think it's funny because what you see is not real life. Um, in fact, i am actually been outside quite a bit and have a little bit of a tan now. Anyways, uh, KC1776, thank you for multiple supports. You don't have to do uh, multiple super chats there. Uh, and if you do one, try to write something so I can get to know you. And then Irish Rebel, thank you so much. Uh, it says closing out the week. Uh, oh, go I got that one, but there was something else I just missed. Who did I just miss? Uh, Chicky R, I got that. Mandy May, 
minus blindfold, thank you. And then China and the Solomon Islands draft secret security pact, raising alarm in the Pacific. It says, out of Australia, a leaked document has revealed uh, that China and the Solomon Islands are close to signing a security agreement that could open the door to Chinese troops and naval warships flowing into a Pacific Island nation that played a pivotal role in WW2. It says the agreement kept secret until now was shared online Thursday night by opponents of the deal and verified as legitimate by the Australian government. Though it is marked as a draft and cites it needs for social order as a justification for sending Chinese forces. It has set off alarms throughout the Pacific uh, where concerns about China's intentions have been growing for years. This is deeply problematic for the United States and a real cause for concern for our allies and partners. It says the establishment of a base in the Solomon Islands by a strategic adversary would significantly degrade Australia and NZ's security, increase the chances of local corruption, and heighten the chances of resource exploitation. It is not clear which side initiated the agreement, but if signed, the deal would give Prime Minister Manasse uh, Sagaver of the Solomon Islands the ability to call on China for protection of his own government while granting China a base of operations uh, between the United States and Australia that could be used to block shipping traffic across the South Pacific. So Dex, do you realize what... I'm sorry, but my gut says that this is about to be an all-out conflict, you know, confrontation between us and China. I have covered for years all of the signs that they are getting all of their ships ready to actually go across the ocean. Most people uh, do not believe that uh, that you know they they think that the the USA has this like geographical barrier that is growing smaller and smaller by the day. As far as you know, it's too far. It's too this. Yeah, totally. And, and, you know, we look at how um, the Dragon has spent its money uh, developing its uh, military, growing its navy. Um, granted, it's not the same types of ships we have, but their number of ships is greater than ours, even though there's probably a lot of little boats, but that's fine. It's still, it's a significant milestone for them. Um, it, it makes total sense that they're going to continue to look for land grabs that they can get because they're trying to mimic the, what the U.S. Uh, has and the power that, you know, our military has across many of the islands throughout the Pacific. Um, and, you know, I, I certainly would think that they're looking and saying, well, we need to have the same thing because we need to be able to have staging points where we can make it across, where we can, you know, build up troops, we can build up fuel, we can build up other things. And and so we're, we're going to see that. And we, by the way, we've heard about all of the ports uh, that they've invested heavily in with a lot of poorer countries where they'll go in and, you know, do a financing deal, run a port, the country runs out of money, can't afford it, and boom, they take over. Now they have it um, or they they broker a deal to put a base in or, you know, or or borrow portions of the port to use for their own um, their own Navy, right? So a lot of that is happening across the globe as China uh, continues to expand uh, its military footprint. Well, and some of the, the newer folks that have just started watching, we covered when they converted all these civilian ferries into actual ships that could take their troops not only uh, to Taiwan, but over to here. Um, a lot of these ships have actually been retrofitted or built with the, the initial design to be able to take tanks and troops, uh, even to the point where they've got 160-foot ramps on the back of civilian ferries for tanks, not for regular cars, but for tanks and for heavy equipment. Uh, to do that, they have to have these massive hydraulic lifts uh, that cost way more to, to run than just a normal ferry. So you're, you're talking about, and then they're drilling, uh, taking out our carriers in the desert. It's, it's very obvious that they're practicing to, to fight us. I mean, it, it's, that's something that I think people are still confused on because a lot of people think that they're all in cahoots and all in bed with each other. But do you think that those lower end people that are generals and, and then down below lieutenants and people, do you think that they aren't being told that they're about to go to conflict with us? And do you think that they they won't let them die in a conflict against us? They, I mean, they could take out millions of people as far, part of another uh, operation and do it 
pr- pretty much, it, you know, very easily. If we do again, if it, some of you, I, I see you believe that they want less of us around. And I mean, like a huge chunk of us to disappear because we're just the, the crap on the bottom of their shoes. But then you don't believe that we'll go to conflict. I don't know why. I mean, do they care about our life? Do they care about us down below? No. They don't care about me. I'm sure they don't care about you. So Janine Hutter, thank you for subscribing. Mel B says off topic, but you sound just like Paul Rudd, Marv. Thank you. I love Paul Rudd. And then uh, Ilea, thank you, says prayers for Pops. Hey, thank you, Ilea. I uh, appreciate you praying for Pops. And then uh, Romeo C, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And... Uh, let's see here. And then U S slaps new sanctions on NK after a missile test. So obviously we followed that before we go to that. I do want to remind you, uh, if you have not prepped yet, and if you don't have any long-term storage food for years, people asked us to end up, uh, suggesting one that we go through my, myself and Dex both go through my Patriot supply. I ended up actually finding them through another YouTuber. I tried a seven year sample of food and it was amazing. And, uh, we have been, uh, affiliates ever since their food is really good. Uh, their food lasts a very long time and they have pretty much everything in stock. They have not raised their prices. Even when CV hit, there were several things they, uh, they never raised their price. Um, while we've been with them. And then also the, the only thing they have done is they've subtracted a couple of the discounts. Uh, they'll do the discounts and take them away. Right now, there still is the $150 off on three months supply. Uh, that means you will get everything you need included uh, in the, these are uh, self-sealed buckets that essentially have uh, self-sealed MREs and everything inside uh, that are just packed and, and ready to go. That way they can last years and years on your shelf and actually a lot of people see this as an investment because th- this kind of food actually has been going up in value. Uh, if you go to marfuglenews.com slash prep, not only will you be helping our channel, you'll be helping yourself. And if you don't know why you need prep food or stuff saved up, then then you might be uh, closing your eyes and going la la la. Uh, at this point, there are other things on there that are really important as well, like uh, an, a water purification or water filtration system. Uh, they have the Alexa Pure Pro. Many of the Fugal fam have it. They already know it's an amazing, uh, amazing, amazing device. And then, of course, you have the uh, iodine pills, battery chargers, all sorts of battery banks, different gadgets that you'll need, any, and pretty much anything you need to survive is there. It's a lot of people just like it because it's fun. You can go in there and uh, if you like gadgets and things, they have pretty much everything. So again, go over there, marfuglenews.com slash prep. You will get a discount on, a, on the three month supply. If you go for that now, uh, that is not guaranteed to stick around. So make sure to check the current prices if you're watching the replay. All right. And then talking about us slapping new sanctions on NK, this is where I really wanted to pop in and Dex, I guess I've talked to you about this because it's like, so first of all, with this entire thing and us doing sanctions, I guess I, I feel like, why aren't we saying, why aren't we saying to, to the bear or to anybody else? Like if you do this, everybody's afraid of us putting us troops in UKR, but shouldn't the bear be afraid if we put us troops and we were just ballsy about it and just put our troops right on the border. Wouldn't, I mean, shouldn't we be in the position where they would be scared to come in and, and shouldn't they be the ones that are like, Oh, we don't want to go in there because we might uh, accidentally hit a U.S. troop. Shouldn't they be afraid of us instead of us being afraid to go in there and, and, and spar with them. Yeah. It's funny. You say that one of the reporters, I want to say it was yesterday during, um, uh, the current administration's talk over in Europe asked him, Hey, did you give up too much by, by saying, Hey, we'll never send troops in because it'll cause, you know, the third conflict. Right. So we're not doing it. And by saying that, did you basically cede all power to, you know, to the other side because they know you're never coming in so they can go do whatever it is they want to do. Um, and, and I guess, you know, that is one perspective of, of what's going on and whether it's NK or whether it's what's happening in UKR, you know, there could have been a position where we went in and said, you know what, 
cross over the line, we're already, we're going to be here. So don't come in. Right. Or we could take a position with NK, which is like, you know, you put another one up, we're going to, you know, put one up your nose, so to speak. Right. Um, so, so, so knock it off, or we can just sit back and passively let, you know, these countries continue to grow like they've done under other administrations, whether it would be the, you know, um, I ran to the store, uh, country, which did a whole lot for many years and, and, and got paid for it. Um, or, you know, NK, which obviously has built up, you know, a, a significant arsenal, so to speak, and significant technology, whether it was given to them or not, they have it. Right. And not a lot of other countries, especially adversaries that are small, especially hermit states, have that type of technology. So, um, you know, we could do something about it or we can just, you know, sit back and and play a game like we are. I just don't I don't I don't understand it. It should be in the, the position where the Russian news is explaining to their citizens like, sorry, we can't go in there and take this because there's a, a few U.S. troops there. I mean, we don't want to start WW3 with the U.S. <laughs> Why are we the ones that are afraid? Like, I, I feel like just anybody else, if anybody else was in office and they said, we'll go in there and we'll whoop your butt, then they would back up. It makes you think, like, in theory, do they know something we don't? Are we not as... uh as strong as we used to be. I know that there's a lot of people that are uh, obviously pro everything America and they say we will kick everybody's butt, but you never want to underestimate your enemy. And obviously we have our own Pentagon saying, and you could say that these guys are traitors by saying that Russia and China are both ahead of us in technology. Um, well, on the bear side, they are. they have got hypersonics or they said that they had it before us. We don't know if we have that. We're just secretly doing it. Publicly, we say that we're failing at it, that we've tried testing it and we keep failing. So we can't prove publicly that we have these these uh, technologies or at least to the same level that they do. But as far as uh, uh, AI and other things that are going to be extremely important in military uses, uh, we are now, they're saying that we are behind an AI. That's insane. It's going to be used in everything from drones to tanks to uh, military uses. Dex? Yeah, you know, we, we flex our might all the time. Uh, we, you know, up until the start of the uh, invasion at UKR, we, you know, we constantly tested ICBMs. We did huge drills. We continue to do certain drills. Some things we backed off just because we didn't want to, you know, um, cause a, a riff and, and start and, and cause the spark, I guess I should say, to start off the uh, the, the third conflict. So we, we quit launching our ICBMs and testing, right? Um, but the point is, if, if we actually had hypersonics, which by the way, I know we do, we have them in testing, we have them in, um, you know, like all sorts of R&D projects. We have planes that do some really crazy stuff that we've never even heard of, never spoke of, and probably couldn't if anybody was to go on air and talk about it, right? They couldn't talk about it, it's all <clears> classified. <throat> But that stuff's not necessarily rolled out sitting on every one of our carriers. It's not sitting on every one of our subs. It's not It's not like it's in full production, right? It's just in this R&D phase or it's just in this, yeah, we've tested it, we've seen it work or et cetera. I know I, in my mind, I believe if we had in a, a complete you know, arsenal of hypersonics, we'd probably be firing them off left and right just to show that they work, right? Just like we do with all of our other stuff. I guess that's a, that would be up to debate. I could see a bunch of people saying that we we would keep it hidden until last second or <clears throat> or they could deploy them. They could have them undercover away from satellite <clears throat> or have them. Some of the newer carriers have these kind of like garages. I don't know if you have seen that. Uh, these new weird shaped kind of they look like robots like they're going to turn into a transformer or something. I don't know, but I, I do know that it feels to me like NK is testing just out of nowhere and just a ton. And it seems like if you believe that all of this is for show, it's like, is there any anything that's real? Like, just assuming there's a small possibility that they're really practicing to do something, are they practicing on doing something for somebody else? Like, are they getting something out of this, out of the deal are they going to get a part of, of China if they, you know, launch a missile or something uh, for them? See, 
if they launch, then we have to respond to them. Uh, as far as Kim, it's like he doesn't have much to lose. He's, they're, they've already sanctioned the hell out of themselves. They're basically isolated from the world. Yeah, and let's not let's not forget there's the whole other theory that says the way things are looking right now is because it's an orchestration, right? It's something that's been put it's it's in a plan of so, a bigger plan of some sort. So, you know, while we may ask why do we look or feel weaker or why are we not doing the things that you think we would do if we were as strong as we are, well, maybe they're doing that intentionally. I don't know. We don't know. But those are certainly those are all the different sides of this, uh, you know, this um, situation we're in that we have to look at, you know, is it organic? Is it not? Is it, you know, is, is someone being used as a proxy or not? Is, you know, um, is someone actually pulling puppet strings across all of this or not? Right? Yeah, maybe, maybe someone was put in power that's purposely screwing us over. <clears throat> Think about that. Uh, Bible Talk 777, the radiation from the coming nukes will be blamed for the demise of all of the people who got scorpion stings. Uh, I've heard that theory all over the place. Um, and I've, I've heard it from some folks that you didn't even, wouldn't even think would ever consider that, right? Um, what's funny is the most respectable, well-educated people are starting to believe in the, the whole depop. Maybe that's that's a bad sign. Stephen McMahon, thank you so much for your support. Yes, but boys, the Chinese don't have the military uh, with where all the project large force of soldiers over here. True. No, I, I see. I think that we still have um, we have one of the most amazing militaries in the world. We also have a geographical kind of advantage because of where we are. But then you have these weird deals like Canada doing backdoor deals with no offense canada but you guys let and did an agreement with uh the dragon to let them train their soldiers on their land and even be able to protect uh all of their uh, uh their national interests and they wouldn't even have to tell canada that they were there this is in the actual document agreement that was public so it's not coming from like a third party source or something we read the agreement. We even shared it out. It's on our uh, on our archive on our website. Dex, do you remember that? It's like, why would they do a deal like that, where the dragon doesn't even have to say if they fly in ten thousand people to protect their national interest, they do not have to let them know. They don't even have to let the local police know that they're going and bringing troops in there. Why would they do that? It's not like they ever were not our adversary. And Canada is one of our closest allies. Like, why would they do that? Yeah, I, I don't know why they would do it. it. It doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense. Like, uh, turn it around, right? Would uh, the dragon allow us to come put our troops on their land to protect uh, anything that we purchased? Would they allow Canada to, to do that? Like, if if they wouldn't allow it, why would we? Or why would they, right? So I, I, think, I think you have to... It's a it's a really great question, and it's really you know we we looked at that law when they when they passed it, and it really said that it said you know if there was, you know if if there were interests that were owned by the dragon, they had the right to put in their own security force on that property. So it was only on that property. They didn't have full right to just go any nilly nilly willy anywhere across the country. But like you said, if they had ten acres or a thousand acres or ten thousand acres, and they wanted to put people there, they had the right to do it if they owned it. Yep, and uh, we, I I don't know if if can we attach that tonight because I'm sure we're gonna get people that say ah oh, that's not real. Can we find that? I know that it's on our website from that original. Yeah, show. Yeah, I can do some digging and see if I can find it. I I believe you could even probably find it just by typing Canada into the search yeah, bar. I'll look. But uh, and then so this sounds like Ganda. I'm sorry, but we've seen so much of this. It's incredible, and it's always from a UK uh, UKR source. And the reason why is it's saying that this uh, brigade commander of the bear uh, was found perished after being run over by his own troops. They're, and th get this, they're saying that they say as a consequence of the scale of losses that had been taken by his brigade, uh, that they were very angered by the heavy losses. Uh, and it said to have taken 
their commander down in front of other horrified uh, soldiers. I mean, this is this is like they're saying that because they lost, like you lost, so we're just going to take you out. It says that we believe that he was run over by his own troops. This is this is obviously uh, to make them look just absolutely horrible, and um, it, it makes they're they're very much going for this like WW two make him look like uh, Adolf type of thing. Uh, to, to to make their whole military look like that, to make them look like NK, right? I just I don't know what's real here though, because they they banned we we've uh, been going out with a VPN to try to get other stuff. You can still get RT on Rumble, but there's even independent uh, Russian news that we used to go through, and now we can't find it. Uh, I I I believe that they're probably if this gets any worse, they're just you're not going to be able to find anything from that country and I, I'm not uh, not carrying anybody's water or anything uh, but I, I do think that you should have both sides especially independent journalists that are there that's it's crazy to me that we can't even get uh, other citizens from around the world that are there uh, we can't get a lot of their information like what's actually happening over there and then we have odd chipmunk says president B needs the UKR conflict I ran to the store. Uh, the bear and the dragon and NK are all postures to wage that conflict, to kick off. Uh, the kickoff is going to be an is. It says once President B signs the ran to the store nuclear deal, is will attack them full scale. Uh, very well could be. I mean, it's a bad B movie when we see... Uh, we see the person running up the stairs instead of out the front door. That's kind of how everything has been. I guess looking at the patterns, it WW3 is is kind of like it's it's happening. It's just not. It's how bad will it affect here uh, here at home or in Europe or in Australia? How, you know how many people will be affected? I think in a place like Australia, you may have people shipped off to it or possibly. I don't know if they'll ever have a draft type of thing, but I believe everyone that is living now will know someone who is most likely lost due to this next big conflict. That's my thoughts, but what what's yours? Let me know in the comments down below. Simply Pony, thank you for popping in. And uh, Casey1776, again, thank you. Less more, uh, thank you for uh, subscribing. And then Simply Pony, hello, Mother Fooglers. All right, and then uh, over on DLive, Texas Rob 49 just went nuts and did the highest compliment you can bestow on somebody on D Live and just dropped a ninja. It says Adam Dex and mods are awesome. Thank you for keeping us all in the loop with this crazy world we live in. Much love, everyone. Hey, thank you, Texas Rob. Thank you for going above and beyond. Thank you for supporting us through dark and light. So I appreciate you. And again, we don't forget that kind of stuff. Uh, Jesse the Kid, thank you. R. Tate, Jacktronics, Moxie71, Lisa K23. Thank you guys. I hope all of you are doing good. Uh, Gone Girl, Triple Seven, Gem Gem, Stormblade X69, Chewy Weather. Thank you, everybody. Much love goes out to all of you watching the replay or here live with us. And then we have France has increased its ballistic missile submarine patrols for the first time in decades. It says that France's revised nuclear deterrence postures come as nuclear threats from the rush have become especially concerning due to its actions in UKR. It says for the first time in about 30 years, France has put three of its four ballistic missile submarines or SSBNs to sea at the same time. According to the reports in the local media, normally just one of their triumphant class SSBNs, uh, each uh, which can be armed up to 16 submarine launched ballistic missiles. That's essentially 16 nukes with multiple warheads. Each is on patrol at any given time. The significant uptick in French nuclear deterrence activity seems to be intended as a signal to rush at a time of unprecedented tensions in Europe, including fears that nuclear weapons could be part of the Kremlin's plan as it, can, uh, as it campaigns in U 
Okay, our stutters. So the, you, there's many different routes that you could down and believe in, uh, but one of them is the slight possibility that they uh, really are being defeated of some sort and they, they end up reverting back to their strong point or they're cornered in the whole world and basically they think, hey, we're never coming back from this. We're going to be sanctioned. We're going to be NK from now on. Think about this. Uh, the bear country has been in modern technology. I mean, it's been... People have traveled there. It's it's a, a beautiful place. It's, um, you know, people have been going there for years. There's, uh, it is, it, I, I guess, you know, it's it's not exactly a third world country, right? It's it's up to date. There are places there that are pretty down downright uh, bad. They have a very small GDP. I mean, their GDP is smaller than New York. But at the same time, if this ends up, I mean, they could turn them into NK, completely isolated from the world if if there is this happening if they truly are kicking them out of the young leaders club or whatever and they're just dumping them out on the street uh does he have the power to use these things and will he uh is there any truth to the fact that uh some are claiming that he has some sort of terminal disease that that uh vlad is you know got six months to to live or something is that why some of this is happening? There's lots of theories going around. But, you know, either way, are we not going to prepare like it is? I mean, I'd rather prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And then we have, um, by the way, Dex, with France, there was many things that happened. Wasn't it the, the French power, uh, the power line that was cut between France and Euro uh, France and Europe? Was that yeah, right? Yeah, France and England or UK. Yeah, it was. A, there was a power uh, that runs under the under the channel there between, uh, between the two countries. And then wasn't it the uh, French who had a deal with Australia to sell nuclear subs to them? And then what the world saw and what the public saw is that Australia actually said, "Hey, we're gonna screw the French." and go with the USA because the USA can get us those nuclear subs now, whereas the French, it was going to take them like a matter of years. Right. And I don't think that they were the same. Obviously, ours are better. So they, they, they're they like, we, we'd rather have the US equipment. Um, so yeah, that, that did happen. Uh, that was definitely something that France didn't take uh, too lightly. They were kind of upset over it. Uh, well, I wouldn't say quite. They were all very upset over it. Well, let's just just hypothetically, what if what if they saw something coming and they were actually canceling it from their end, but they made because it was such a big, huge public deal that investors had millions and millions of dollars and you know billions probably. May, what if they uh, secretly said, "Well, no, we're actually going to need them, uh, so get them from the U.S." and then because of the uh, amount, it would affect all of their stock markets or whatever. I don't know. Just, uh, just a thought. Like, what if they actually said, hey, we're going to need to build these for ourselves uh, because of this whole thing coming up that we know about? I don't know. And then we have President B tells U.S. troops they'll be in UKR for an, in an apparent gaffe. Now, they're calling this a gaffe. They're saying that it was a mistake. And when you watch it, you still get a bad feeling about it because he... Basically, the way he's saying is like, oh, you'll see, you know, trying to like he would be talking to anybody, right? Like, oh, you'll see on TV that there's going to be people standing in front of tanks, but he's talking to the troops. So the way it was taken is you are going to be in UKR and you're going to see this. It says that President B told U.S. troops in Poland, again, Poland, we've followed very closely because this is a lot of people think this is where the next place will be. Friday that they will witness the bravery of UKR citizens fighting off uh, the invasion. It says, when you're there, this is the words he used, when you're there, an apparent gaffe, uh, uh, after he repeatedly insisted that the U.S. will stay out of the European conflict to avoid triggering WW3, president made the remark while addressing members of the army's 82nd airborne division after launching uh lunching on pizza and posing for selfies with dozens of paratroopers at a mess hall in Rezau, southeastern poland says you're going to see when you're there <laughs> again 
and some of you have been there, you're going to see. You're going to see women, young people standing in the middle in front of a damn tank just saying, I'm not leaving, I'm holding my ground. Is he saying something that's going to be on TV next week like a like like they're shooting it now? <laughs> Dex, did you think about that? Like it, like the wag the dog situation? Like the, they're filming a commercial now. Like, oh, you're going to see me in it. I'm in the background. I'm an extra. Yeah, he just got done touring the set, right? Yeah. Oh no, it's great. God, it looks so real. The tank, the tank totally looks great. It's not, it's not inflatable at all. Like they used real uh, PBS plastic. Um, just so happens it's in our plastic bottles tonight. <laughs> you can get a piece of the tank right now. Just drink your water. It says the White House did not immediately respond to the Post's request for clarification. President B also said during his remarks that the U.S. was working to, quote, keep the massacre from continuing. After more than 3.7 million UK Arns have fled their country during the uh, month-old conflict. It's crazy to think it's only been a month, but it's gone very slow. I mean, time is sp sped up, but gone slow at the same time. Mrs. Free, much love from, Miss, uh, from me and Mr. Free. Hey, and thank you, Mr. Free, as well. Thank you guys for watching together. And then Kelly Spack says, check out Dan Chico's uh, YouTuber in uh, Ru Russo country. Um, I will. I Dan Schikos, uh, Chico's, S-H-E-E-K-O-Z. I will check it out. Anybody over there, that's a great suggestion. And then uh, Mrs. Free, thank you. And I remember yesterday you said that you and the hubby watch every night. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I can't say thank you enough. All right, and then uh, we're going to be getting to... We're going to go over to the chat right now. I want to see what... So let me ask you this. I'm going to turn on chat real quick. I'm going to just say one month, two months, six months. Just tell me how long do you think it will be before we are all at an all-out confrontation or if you believe that we will not go to WW3, just tell me that. How long, how many months do you think that it will be before we're at an all-out confrontation? Or do you think it won't happen? Put the amount of, of months or years or tell me you don't think it's ever going to happen. I'd love to gauge where everybody is at on this, uh, this front here. See, one month, three weeks, less than 48 hours. That's creepy. Two weeks, three months, one month, a lot of six months. By the way, anybody at home, just to show you, there's if, if you're new to this channel, the chat is almost 4,000. Actually, this includes DLive. This is a, close to 5,000. I'm actually surprised how many people are saying, you know, in the next three months. That's actually, um, I, I, it makes me, uh, makes me feel better. I, I feel like it could be any, any time, but then you, you get called a fear monger. If you tell people that we talk to actual military and they're saying that they believe in the next three months. But if we say that, then we're, you know, then if it doesn't happen in three months, people go, oh, see, you said this was going to happen. I think it's very important to prepare as if it's going to happen tomorrow and then just try to uh, live life the best you can and understand you're not, the, the whole reason for fear and people are being afraid is it comes down to the f fact that people are afraid of dying. What else? Why else would you logically be worried about it then? Why is this a, to scare people? Why should this scare people? If you're not afraid of death, then you shouldn't be afraid of this. But it does panic people. I know that my sister, uh, her, her, her son, uh, he's totally separate. He does his own thing. They're down in California. And he is uh, really, he does get anxiety. And I worry about somebody like him, you know, watching all this stuff. I'm glad he doesn't watch my stuff because honestly, I, I think it would affect him. But he also has different things affecting him. Um, it's it's a scary thing to talk about it, but I think that people really do need to like just 
realize that every day is a blessing that we wake up every day that we have our friends and family around it it's a time that we should be holding our loved ones close and our non-loved ones even closer we should be making up and and stop fighting and and stop dividing it doesn't make any sense uh dex do you want to talk about some of the web only stuff we and again uh looks like we have a lot of it i and i wonder adam if when the history books are written about this year in the future will we have already would they already say we're in that conflict as of today right like it, it almost feels like we've entered or in some could even say we entered it before this on the 24th too, with all this. Yeah. With all the cyber stuff and everything else that's gone on, all of the interference and, and, and allegations back and forth and, and information being handed over, et cetera, to countries and, and what we've done and haven't done all of that. You know, you could go back in time and say, we've been in it this whole time. It'll be interesting, you know, to look back 20 years from now to what they say we are today. Right. But yes, let's talk about web only content. So if we're, if we're still around, right? Yeah. 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 If we're still around. Yeah, exactly. So head over to morfuglenews.com and that's morfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show, or if you're on YouTube, open the description and click that first link that says show notes. That'll take you right to this page. You will get to all of the articles we just talked about, anything else we update during the show. And then you'll find this section called web only content. So there, this is where you will find the rest of the story. Lots of interesting things happening over there, even for a Friday, which it tends to be a little duller on Fridays, but uh, you can find out who the people want to be the running mate in uh, 24. Although none, no one has been announced, and even the uh, on the one side of the party hasn't even officially announced, so it's all just speculation. But a lot of conversation going on there. Um, there's been a lot of hubbub about a big buy of stock with Tesla. You can find out more about that. Um, and UKR, there's some people that have come in, you know, and I think um, our current administration announced today that we were going to take in, uh, maybe it was yesterday's announcement, I can't remember, yesterday or today, uh, 100,000 people from UKR, right? Um, well, there's just an article in there talking about some of those people that have been let in and where they're now being uh, detained, which is kind of an interesting uh, thing. So go take a look, you're going to learn more about it. Um, lots of back and forth on the political side, some uh, things happening with different people, including something with iced tea and I'll just leave it at that. And you <laughs> can go find out the rest of the story <laughs> along with everything else we haven't talked about. It is on our fugalnews.com. <laughs> Click on the thumbnail for the show. Or if you're on YouTube, just open that description <laughs> and click on show notes. I just, I see him saying it too. Like I was robbed. All right. Um, that yeah there's so much over there people need to realize that we archive this for a reason the search bar up in the upper right hand corner that makes it so you can any subject that you could possibly think of i challenge people so when they say oh you don't talk about this or you don't talk about that almost guarantee you we've we have people just don't watch every two hour show um essentially you could type in any sensitive topic and we have covered it uh where more people are than here there's more people uh, going to our website for news than watch us live, right? So just understand that, that this website is important too. And to get people over there, it's it's an amazing thing. So thank you, everybody that understands that. Thank you for everybody that um, has been with us since the beginning. Everybody that keeps it positive. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. And to those who don't, I hope you come around and I hope you can... Uh, I, I honestly hope all of you can uh, hang out and, and find a place here and everybody be thrown around love. Uh, Bible Talk Triple Seven says, check out my last video or go to it and click the link in description. I don't know if you got my email. Uh, I will be honest. I have not, I, for the last five or six days, I have been so behind on emails, it's insane. Um, I, I did end up catching up uh, about a year and a half backlog. The thing is, is I get so many. It is absolutely absurd how many emails I get a day. Same with Dex. Uh, Dex, you didn't you didn't believe me until you got your own email for the yeah, show. Yeah, I mean, we we get bombed all the time. It's literally sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but we get that's a term when you get a lot of email. But yeah, we get 
we get tons. Well, no, and tons because of we get a day. we get businesses, we get all sorts of junk mail that yeah, are trying to it. sell us stuff uh, to uh, better our our camera stuff. I mean, people go after YouTubers, and since we, our stuff is public, think about it. Every salesperson has an email, right? So we do get bombed. We get thousands of emails from salespeople trying to sell us stuff that will make our channel better. Uh, we have uh, just tons of people. And then uh, there are people that I really do appreciate that send me stuff every day. Um, I cannot read all of it, but I try to. There's um, an older gentleman that always writes me these long pieces and goes over his own analysis of the news. Um, there are people that send me handwritten letters. And I actually appreciate those more than anything. Uh, they write every single day and they date it out like a journal and they send those to me. I think that's amazing. Those people I really appreciate. Um, so thank you everybody that just lots of love out there. Thank you for the people that send me actual like old school pictures. I just, I, I love all you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you for the people that, uh, that do digital art and music and any, anything else. Um, it, by the way, if anybody's and watching, if you want to. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Adam. I was going to say, if you want our attention in the, in the middle of all those emails and you're sending a video, like make your subject line like something meaningful and give us a little bit of detail and maybe a timestamp. Because if you could imagine receiving, you know, three or 400 links to YouTube videos that are all, you know, an hour long, we don't have three or 400 hours in a day to actually watch. So. Yeah. Make sure you tell us what's important and where to find that exact piece of information. Anybody will tell you that when you do this, everybody sends YouTube links. And I mean, the average video isn't four minutes long. In a day, we get hundreds of links. So if you want to stick out, uh, you can even put some of that in the subject. Like this video has an, you know, an incredible object at 404. It makes it so much easier. Um, and then also there's some things that we won't, you know, we're not just going to click random links. So thank you everybody that understands that. And, uh, remember, you know, just be straight and to the point, uh, if you can, because it helps us get back to you. That's that will help us respond to you. And it is a lot of work. People that don't understand how much work we do. I just don't understand it. So again, thank you everybody. I love you guys. Um, Hoping that uh, Pops gets better and out of the hospital. Love you, Jay Stone. And I, I, Pops, praying for you. And the whole Fugal fam is behind you. And thank you for everybody that's been positive lately. I appreciate all of you guys. Dex, love you. Great show, brother. Much love. Uh, just a reminder before we go, if you have not already, go check out the, the Energy Solar Generator right now. Again, this is one of the most flexible systems out there. It is easy to use and it is customizable. This thing is just incredible. What really sets this apart is it's silent from a gas powered generator. Uh, you can run it inside. And uh, again, one of the best part about this is it is expandable. A lot of the generators you see will be just a box and that's it. That's all you got. And then uh, as you know, over time, it, with a regular generator, if it's got a built-in battery, as you charge it and charge it and charge it and charge it, over uh, over time, it's going to degra uh, degradate. This, you can not only expand up to 96 batteries, enough power to last, you know, uh, last 1,500 watts for a year. Uh, this is something that you can actually expand or replace. So it is an amazing system. It is also one of the few systems that you can input the amount of energy that it does. You can even get a supercharger mod that goes in between the battery and the unit that allows you to put three times uh, the amount of solar panels plugged in. Their portable solar panels are absolutely amazing. I'm still waiting on mine. I cannot wait. I am literally waiting every single day for these things and hoping that they come. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful. They charge uh, Flex 1500 with one battery. If you have the... Uh, the the four panels hooked up you can actually charge this in about three and a half hours that's really really freaking amazing uh, and you can supercharge it to charge it even faster than that so again have a good day guys i love you marfuglenews.com slash energy it is now time for the shout tro it's not an outro it's not a shout out it's a shout shout tro
a fresh one for Texas Rob 49 and Bible Talk 777, our top supporters on DLive and on YouTube.